welcome to today's session on chi square in this session we'll try to gain basic knowledge of chi square test chi square test first introduced by frederick robert helmold pearson first time tested chi square in the 19th century and thereafter chi square test is also known as pearson chi square test chi square test is looking for variance or you can say variation or differences exist between variables correlation test follows association whereas chi square test follows differences in fact both correlation and chi square test are looking for certain relationship between variables i want to tell you few basic requirements to do chi square test number 1 to do a chi square test you should have categorical data a categorical data is having certain categories for example gender as it is commonly having two categories that is male and female another important requirement is table formation generally chi square table is having 2 by 2 table but sometimes table size may be extended as per need of the study in below i am citing one example of 2 by 2 table in this table you can see two categories that is smoking habits and gender each category is further divided into two smoking habit divided into tobacco smoker and tobacco non smoker whereas gender divided into males and females the third important step is degrees of freedom which is known as df degrees of freedom are the number of independent values that a statistical analysis can estimate it is an essential idea that appears in many contexts throughout statistics including hypothesis testing probability distribution and regression analysis degrees of freedom are the critical values that statisticians are using and the table of degrees of freedom are also available the df for chi square test are calculated using the formula df equal to within bracket r minus 1 into within bracket c minus 1 where r refers to row and c refers to column on above sided table you can see two rows and two columns if you apply this formula we will get only score 1 that means 2 by 2 tables have 1 degree of freedom i want to show you degrees of freedom in the next slide this is a degrees of freedom with probability values we generally use 0.05 probability value that means we are sure with 95% confidence interval while doing chi square test we need to follow observed or expected chi square statistics and if the expected chi square statistic is greater than critical value of 3.841 at 1 degree of freedom means null hypothesis can be rejected p value which stands for probability value or significance level generally we follow p value of 0.05 with 95% confidence interval as per study design and need we can also be able to take p value 0.01 means 99% confidence interval p 
value more than 0.05 means no differences at the rate 95% CI. Whereas p value equal to 0.05 or less means data have variations or differences. Hypothesis When we we'll go with the uh, chi square test, we should have certain hypothesis. So, here I citing one example of hypothesis. There is no relationship between gender and getting in trouble at school. This is our study hypothesis. And we will always have null hypothesis. Null hypothesis will always reject our research hypothesis. So, here null hypothesis is denying our hypothesis by saying there is relationship between gender and getting trouble in school so how will we do the test manually nowadays spss is available so we can test with the help of spss but a theoretical understanding you should have before going to spss so as per our hypothesis I prepared a 2 by 2 table. So in this 2 by 2 table you can see that gender and getting trouble at school got in trouble. So 46 boys were there and 37 girls were there. Total 83. Did not get in trouble. 71 boys were there and 83 girls were there. So, all together 154. Total score for boys 117. Total score for girls 120. Overall 237 respondents. Now, we need to get first expected frequency. So, I will tell you the calculation of expected frequency. So, for boys, multiply row total by column total and dividing by the total observation that is multiply multiply total row that is 117 for boys altogether by the total column so total column uh, 83 okay for first 46 boys i am getting here divided by total number 237 so 40.97 for boys got in trouble that is the expected frequency and expected frequency for girls multiply row to tell by column to tell and dividing by the Total observation. For example, 120 for girls, the total raw score is 120 and got in trouble, total raw uh, columns uh, score is 83. So you can see 120 into 83 then divided by 237. So 42.03 did not get in trouble. For boys, Multiple, uh, multiply total row by to, column total and dividing by the total observation. For example, that uh, did not get in trouble for boys. The total uh, row is 117 and did not uh, get in trouble for boys. The total score for column is 154. Divided by 237, 76.03. That is the expected score. Similar way for girls, we have 77.97 by following the same formula. Now, next what we need to prepare. You can prepare the uh, observed frequency and the 
um, the actual frequency and the uh, expected frequency. So uh, um, total uh, frequency for boy was for. And the expected frequency is 40.97. So, similarly, you can see all the scores over here. Now, the formula is that chi square or x square equal to uh, submission of that uh, within bracket 0 minus e, 0 means observed minus expected uh, square divided by expected. And you can uh, keep your score over here. So you just see chi square equal to then within bracket 46. 46 is the uh, raw score minus 40.97. 40.97 is the expected score. Putting square divided by the expected score so expected score for boys got in trouble is 40.97 plus um, 37 minus 42.03 square 37 is for girls got in trouble minus 42.03 means the expected score uh, then we uh, take square uh, divided by 42.03 which is the Mm. expected score for girls who got in trouble so similar way who did not get uh, get uh, trouble uh, we need to uh, keep the score for boys and girls and you can see and then uh, after doing all this after uh, making all calculation I got the score that is chi square equal to 1.87 and this is this is our chi square score and now what you need to do we know 1 df with 0 0.05 probability equal to 3.841 then next our chi square result came 1.87 so this value is less than 1 df value right that is 3.841 so it is less than 3.841 so rule is that if expected chi square value is greater than 1 df that is 3.841 that time we can reject null hypothesis but now here our score is 1.87 after doing our uh, test so we can say that we will reject the uh, will accept the null hypothesis why because the formula mentioned that it should be greater than the 1 df but it is less than 1 df and that's why we will uh, accept our null hypothesis so what uh, in this study what are the things that we are going to ex accept we are going to accept that there is relationship between gender and getting in trouble at school so it doesn't matter that either uh, we accept our hypothesis or uh, we accept our null hypothesis in social science it is not a very big issue uh, we uh, sometimes our study hypothesis may be rejected and for when uh, our uh, original hypothesis will reject then what we need to do we need to uh, establish certain other factors that why why uh, relationship between gender and uh, those who are getting trouble at school so this uh, relationship we need to uh, prepare and uh, when we will do the test when uh, in SPSS uh, your um, your difficulties will be solved if you have any doubt that time you can understand much better way. So nowadays we are not uh, using all formula but you should have some certain knowledge and idea about that formula. With this, I am going to conclude here. Thank you very much. We will meet in next session.
Thank you.